Hello everyone. Uh, I've been trying to restore some 35 millimeter film and negatives for my family um, collection. Uh, I've been spending the last few days working with this um, device. It's called a Prime Film XAS, the Super Edition off of Amazon. I think it's about $460 to $500. Um, you can buy them on B&H and also Adorama. I kind of wanted to show you my workflow for doing these uh, because I did find some neat tips and tricks and use for t useful tools that uh, have helped me process uh, quite a few already to pretty good uh, quality. Um, so I guess uh, just getting into it, what I usually do, I power on the device, which is on now, um, turn on the silver fast on the computer. This is the, um, I think it's the SE version that came free with this, which is a good uh, little bonus. Um, it does take a little bit of getting used to, but I found it's actually pretty pretty good uh, for getting into a workflow that, that works pretty well. Um, I also have this bad boy. Um, this is something down the road um, where we, we're going to do 4x6s. Again, probably one of the better ones to have um, for scanning 4x6 photos. Uh, really hard to find right now. They're not really for sale, but you can find them sometimes on Craigslist for like 300 bucks or so. Uh, used on eBay. The used ones are almost the price of new, so you got to be careful there. Um, here's some solution I use um, on these slides if they're in really rough condition. These ones in the boxes have been pretty good. All, all I have to do is just use the um, the blower, and then this um, device has an infrared sensor or scan that will actually detect and eliminate some of the dust. But the more dust you can get off in the beginning, uh, the better quality your image will be. Um, so in case there is a lot of dust or if they were left out and they need a little bit of um, cleaning, I would take a, um, a little Q-tip and dip it in this and maybe clean it gently and then also uh, uh, wipe it down and clean it uh, that way as well. Uh, I do have this stuff. I used to clean telescope uh, mirrors and I think this is also something that will help it dry without uh, leaving any type of streaking, but um, for that I'm not sure I just found that here. So anyway, we, we start off, we grab one of our uh, Kodachrome 35mm mounted slides. Um, check, check usually which way they are. This is number 9. Put it in the device. It kind of mounts itself, which is really neat. I never use any of these. Um, I'm not even sure what they'll do. I think those are for this, this, this side here, which does negatives. So if you have a strip of negatives, or maybe film too, It'll, it'll take them in there. I haven't done that yet, and I haven't had any negatives to, to do um, that were in a strip yet, so um, I haven't tried that out. All right, so, oh, I just decided to restart. Okay, so this is an old film. Not sure why, or an old scan, not sure why it's showing that. Uh, they have presets. If you click this button, you can get into the preset menu. I, I don't really use that because I like to use some of the more um, custom settings. So we do a pre-scan. So this is a this is from a 1950 or 1965 birthday party. So you can see the quality of the scans if your films were kept uh, in good condition. Even, even though this looks really nice there was dust um, that's automatically picked up and eliminated. So it is taking a, a bit of time to scan. A few minutes, I think, uh, if you're doing the highest resolution. I'm doing 5,000 DPI. I've read that 10, you can do 10,000, but it in 10,000, it, it's really just a 5,000 DPI scan. Not 100% sure if that's accurate or not, but that's what I was uh, reading about. So you can see quite a bit of dust. I didn't blow this one off, which was my mistake. Um, and we'll just do an example. If I did take the blower, you might see a little bit less, or if I cleaned it, I might do that for the next one. So that's your initial scan. You might want to go in first and uh, adjust the red lines to the perimeter of your um, of your uh, slide, just so you get everything. Sometimes they're a little bit crooked, and that's uh, not the scanner's fault. It's kind of the picture inside the frame, so you can also change that too, but this is fine. I like to leave a little bit of black on the edge. It just makes it uh, uh, look just like a frame shot. All right. The next thing I like to do is I like to do auto-correct um, 
I found this is actually pretty useful. Sometimes it's, it's out of whack, but that's pretty rare. And then I'll, I'll eliminate that. And to eliminate that, you just click, click the histogram, you turn it off. Same with the grade gradation. That eliminates your autocorrect, but I find it's been pretty good. If you need to ch change your curves, your, um, your levels as well, you can also do that here. Um, again, I just like doing the auto. I think it puts it in a good place. And if it's not perfect, um, Photoshop can also work on it as well. So this is something as well that I found useful. This is the scan removal. Um, I believe that's uh, right here, IRSD. So I have already clicked it on. If, if, if you don't have it in your toolbar here, you have to click it here. And then this is, I was a bit confused in the beginning because I didn't show anything. If you click this, it will do a high detail infrared scan. So you can see the dust there. It, it gives you a zoomed image. Um, so it, um, if you're just scanning it now, it's going to do a rescan, I think, in both the scan and then infrared. Um, and I'll show you in the menu while it's scanning. Um, let's just look at automatic first. Oop. Hopefully that didn't change anything. Um, I usually set a correction about 9. And this is something you want to actually be careful of. If this is too high, and say you look at someone's face, Sometimes it starts making um, the edges of their head or their hairline or their eyes even, or sunglasses, for example. It starts to edit them um, and the edges don't appear quite right. That's kind of, I'll show you an example of it once this is done. And in the bottom corner, you can also see the, the scanning um, status. Um, I think this is also present in the other um, scanning software, the ViewScan. I was tempted to buy that, but this has actually served my purpose really well. But again, you can see how dirty this scan is. This is a mistake for not blowing it off or wiping it down with a Q-tip. But this will be a good example for um, uh, the dust removal. But yeah, I'll, if I was to do this again, I'd probably blow it off and clean it and then try it again, which I'll do, I think, after this video. There's other options too. There's, um, you can, if the tint's a bit uh, rosy or green or blue, you can uh, color correct there. Um, I usually leave that for Photoshop. Um, I'll open the image in Photoshop and adjust the, uh, the photo as well if I, if, if, if I think it would work. Let me open the Photoshop for that. All right, so this is uh, the before and that's the after. Photoshop's popping up. So that's pretty good. I'll, I'll try to show you what it looks like. Ah, Photoshop, come on. If you increase the correctness, you can kind of see the, the warping around the edges of um, the lines where it tries to autocorrect. So usually you can go into a in-between area. Even this area here, it's kind of overcorrecting the dust still. So I don't like that. I like to um, have it as kind of in the neutral area as possible. So this eliminates a lot and you can also check. So this is the corrected version. You can see the mark and the mark tells you what dust was or infrared uh, picked up on. Some darker areas where the, uh, the film itself didn't really uh, expose um, the shot or like eyes for example. It will detect as a, a dust moat, but that's not accurate. So again, you don't want to go too far with the correct image. You can see how dark it is there. Uh, the infrared also picked that up. So I usually look at a face or something similar, and then that's what I would correct uh, correct off of. And then once you're happy, you set your your saves um, information. Um, you just go down to uh, scan up here. Sorry, and then this will save the image. And if you do this uh, infrared um, dust removal scan, you, you don't have to uh, scan it again if you use this one-to-one, -one, which is this area. If you leave it in the normal mode, it's gonna rescan it again. Re -scan it again. So I like to leave it in this one-to-one, -one, even though the image is a bit big. Um, and then using this to choose what you're looking at to look at the whether the, the dust is acceptable. So this is pretty good. I would still probably um, clean it again, but for what it's worth, this uh, did a great job. So you can see it's already done. 
So I'll go to my scans. I'll see the photo here. Maybe check again all around. It's, and I like the color as well. You can maybe even turn it. You can rotate as well in the program. I didn't do that. Um, so this is actually acceptable. If there were areas that I think would still need to be corrected in, say, Photoshop, um, I would take it into there. But I'll show you an example in, in Photoshop, what I'd normally do as well. So I'd open the image in Photoshop. Say if it's a bit dark or something that I don't quite like. Um, and then I'd, I'd normally give the camera raw filter. And I'm just more used to this one from using raw images. I don't really like to mess too much with the other stuff. But before that, actually before that, a time saver is to go to image and do your auto tone, auto contrast, and auto color and see how that puts your image. If it puts it at a good spot where you're liking it, that's great. And that's you're, you could almost be done. But I like to go one step further if the image isn't quite the right tone or uh, uh, coolness or whatnot. So if this one's a little bit too much blue, I'll, I'll tint it up just a bit just to make it look more uh, right. And also contrast and exposure, you can adjust depending on how well your 35 millimeter was shot. Some of these 35 millimeters I've noticed were either under or overexposed. I guess with cameras back then, it's really hard to get a, a really awesome shot uh, every time. So sometimes I notice uh, just using the auto, it will correct for a lot of things that um, uh, were hard to do in the original photograph um, and that's all you can click uh, OK and then save it as your uh, your JPEG usually I put it at the highest setting because these files are already pretty small um, as JPEGs and that's all and a cool thing as well is um, in Silverfast you can change I have it set to JPEG because I don't really need a really large file but TIFFs would be better if you're saving them over and over again or doing more editing. Even a Photoshop file or a PDF would work too. Um, for my, my uh, handling of these, the JPEG's been perfectly fine. And I hope that helps with your workflow or if you're using the same device. Um, I hope it helps you uh, get your slides scanned for your family or others. Thank you. Another tip is to file these. I have this clear file for like $10 off of Amazon 35 millimeter slides fits 25 a sheet for every box I put them in a different slide very useful for keeping these organized uh, even in order if you can see the numbers on the back you can put them in an order as well uh, also if you're going through and cleaning these I have this little uh, camera viewer or it's not a camera it's just a viewer uh, plug you can plug it in or use batteries pretty useful especially if you're cleaning to see uh, if you if you missed areas or if you need to fix any slides uh, for any reason or if they're exposed it saves you some time scanning them or if you're sending them away to get them professionally done this will save some time from uh, figuring out which ones are good and bad so pretty neat about $35 on Amazon let's slide them in there and you can tell What's in each photo? If you want to organize them or check uh, current issues, and there's a button on the side that you push. And it slides them right, um, right down in this tray here. Pretty useful again. On the side, you can use strips of negatives or uh, film as well. So pretty neat uh, little additional step in the workflow if you are using uh, these 35 millimeter slides. Thank you. I wanted to add one more little tip and trick that uh, has helped me. Uh, some of the slide boxes that I've had had these extra uh, negatives or 35mm um, uh, slides that were trimmed. I'm not sure why these weren't mounted, but they were. The negatives um, can be done on this machine and through Silverfast, but doing one at a time is kind of tricky. So I found that some of the uh, slides that weren't used or that I have a stack here that were just black that weren't exposed you can take a razor knife and trim through the, the middle of it and create these little uh, open slide mounts that you can slide these guys in it makes it a lot easier to scan through here so you can see the negative in this in the um, settings of 
kind of settings of silver faster. You can actually go into negatives and it works fairly well. So just another tip in case you have extra small ones.